the Riemann jitter function to ADCFT CFT correspondence theory. Riemann hypothesis proof. In mathematics, the Riemann hypothesis is a conjecture that the Riemann jitter function has its zeros only at the negative even integers and complex numbers with real part 1.2. Many constate to be the most important solved problem in pure mathematics. It is of great interest in number theory because it implies results about the distribution of prime numbers. It was proposed by uh, Bernard Riemann, after whom it is named. Now let's prove Riemann hypothesis. Main research: dimension of a sphere with volume divergence. Notification: F3D is a sphere with volume divergence, and DS3D is a boundary of a sphere with volume divergence. F3D is a sphere with volume 1, and DS3D is a boundary of a sphere with volume 1. If DS3D exists, DS3D is homeomorphic with four-dimensional Euclidean space. If DS3D exists, DS3D is homeomorphic with four-dimensional Euclidean space. For the Euclidean space is a metric space with four dimensions. Four independent variables, and this is a usual four-dimensional space. We usually say, so we can say DS3D is 4D. To show that, to show they are homeomorphic, we must show first that there is a function from DS3D to four-dimensional Euclidean space. And the function should be one-to-one -one correspondence, and both the function and each inverse function should be continuous. Let's prove it. To do that, we define the spherical coordinate inside the SVD. Assume three independent compactors which originate in the center of S3D. And within orthography and norm normalization, these vectors can make a rectangular coordinate system. And this three dimensional rectangular coordinate system can be translated into three dimensional spherical coordinates. Now, in this spherical coordinate, we can define an angle, theta phi. Now, within this angle, we can project a point from the center of S3D to DS3D. Then I can call the projected point as theta phi. And we will call this point as A. First, we will show that this 3 d has four independent variables. And I call a point near A with a distance L which is on this 3 d as B. Then B is on the surface. So to sur express B, I can use polar coordinate which originates at A. So B is expressed as omega L, where L is a final length from A, and omega is an angle which specifies a specific point within a distance L from A. And to express B, we first define A, so B is expressed as theta phi omega L, which is a sum of coordinates of theta phi and omega L. Now we will show the four coordinates are independent. Trivially, theta phi is independent, and so is omega L. So we should show that theta phi is independent with omega L. First, C L, the finite length for between A and B, we will show that if L can be expressed with theta phi, then there exists a contradiction. Assume L was expressed with theta phi and the equation expressing the area of DS3D is 4 pi r square and r is infinite, so the area of DS3D should be infinite. And if we express an area of the circle inside, this 4 pi r square delta theta delta phi, this is by then multiplying the radian to the area of this 3D. But multiplying number to an infinite value produces infinite value. And the area of circle within the radius L is finite. So there exists a contradiction when we assume L is expressed with theta phi. So L and theta phi are independent. Now we will show that omega and theta phi are independent. First, assume omega can be expressed as theta phi and assume a function like this and this. And r is a, fun a length value in strict coordinate of S3D and r is the length value in strict coordinate of S3 one And theta phi is the length value in strict coordinate in both systems and this and when r is infinite i is 1. And r is the length from origin in the S3D system, and i is the length from origin in the S3 one. And f is a function which goes from sphere to sphere, so the angle value set phi on the boundary of a sphere is conserved within f. And within f, the length value is conserved with regard to the small and large relation. And f, with f, the infinite circle in the DS3D goes to a point in the DS3 one, which we will prove now. The value of theta 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 phi is conserved in the f because f conserves the value of theta phi. In the final circle on the DS3D is always smaller than 4 pi r squared theta 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 phi, which is infinite. And because theta phi is conserved in f, the value of 4 pi r squared theta 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 phi in DS3D becomes 4 pi theta 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 phi within f. 
So f value on the of the final circle on the this 3D should always be smaller than 4 pi and theta 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 phi. And the circle which is smaller than every other circle is a circle with zero size. So the circle which has finite f value on the DS3D goes to a point on the ds 3 one And here omega is an angular value which is considered within function f. And we assume the omega can be expressed with theta phi. And f conserves theta phi then when a final circle on the DS3D goes to a point on the ds 3 one within f, the omega value which is expressed as theta phi conserves. Then the point on the ds 3 one should have omega value which is expressed as theta phi. And the function f has inverse function and when i is 1, r is infinite. So this means a point goes to a two-dimensional field with inverse f and it is contradiction to the fact that f is 1 to 1 correspondence and has inverse function. So omega and theta phi are independent, so theta phi and omega l expressed as ds3d are four independent variables. And consider the next function and this function and its inverse function is like this. And then f is a function from ds3d to four-dimensional Euclidean space and it has one-to-one -one correspondence and it is continuous. And inverse f is a function from four-dimensional Euclidean space to ds3d and it has one-to-one -one correspondence and is continuous. So ds3d is four-dimensional Euclidean, four-dimensional manifold. Sorry, 2.1.2, Markov s3d is five-dimensional. We will use Prangra definition. Let's see the definition about dimension by Angli Poincaré. One dimension is a zero dimensional section, two dimension is a one dimensional section, and three dimension is a two dimensional section, and four dimension can be defined as a body whose section is three dimension. And by mathematical induction, five dimension can be defined as a body whose section is four dimensional. Now, let's put this definition to several 2.1.1. DSVD is a section of SVD, and DSVD is a four is 4 di four d manifold so the bulk of SVD is 5 dimensional. Theory 2.1.3 A circle with finite area on a DS3D is a plane. Uh, DS3D proof uh, DS3D has a curvature as 1 per r and r has a infinite value so the curvature of DS3D is 0 so the final circle on the DS3D is on the plane. So we proved the sphere with volume divergence is 5 dimensional and the surface is, is 5 the 4D plane. Next time I prove black hole is a sphere with infinite curvature, so black hole has 4D plane surface and 5D perk. And in this way, I will prove ADCFT correspondence theory within a mechanical energy. Uh, now I will explain the topological geometry of black hole using topology of last lecture, and using the topology, I will use. Explain ADCFT correspondence theory. The bulk of black hole have volume divergence. The next equation is about ADS space time metric of a black hole's bulk. The local proper time and proper length at C are like this. The relation between energy and distance in boundary and bulk is following, where Yang mean energy is proportional to 1 over Z and distance Yang mean is proportional to Z. So we have UV divergence and IR. IR divergence and we co can conclude near singular D is still infinite energy which means the Z can go to zero and Z is an open set and this is homeomorphic to infinite lengths. So we showed UV divergence which means black hole has infinite curvature. This is good art for the fact. Now I prove black hole is a sphere within CFT. A CFT is for the Minkowski space which is the surface of black hole has a topology of R multiplied by S3 and S3 is 85, S3 equals R3 plus infinity, so CFT can be expressed as R4 plus infinity, and this is the same with S4, which is the boundary of 5D sphere. Topology of CFT is R multiplied by S3, and S3 is R3 plus infinity, so topology of CFT is R4 plus infinity, which is S4. So black hole CFT has a sphere topology, and this means CFT can be explained as a wave within tide. So this is the wave on the surface of black hole which has a tide. In this membrane, the wave has tide, so the time repeat happens like this. So when combining ADS and CFT, we have this picture, black hole is a sphere with infinite curvature. 
Now I'll explain AGCFT correspondence. In the AGCFT correspondence, the gravity of bulk, which is which is expressed as AG5, is expressed as the wave information of the boundary, which is expressed as CFT. And there should be a homeomorphic correspondence between AG5 and CFT. And the way to show this relation is the same as the way we proved as VD is 5-dimensional. When a particle gets into black hole, it has topology of a sphere surface multiplied by hyperbola. It means a particle gets absorbed by gravity, which explains hyperbolic topology, and a particle has a wave effect, which explains spherical topology. In this way, a particle has a mechanical energy as wave energy and gravity energy. So gravity energy can be expressed as wave energy, and wave energy can be expressed as gravity energy, which is AGCFT correspondence theory. And this uses spherical system when it is about wave energy. This uses hyperbolic topology when it is about volume divergence. So this is same with the way I proved this with is four dimensional. And this ADCF correspondence involves vacation Hawking entropy theory because Hawking entropy says the information of black hole is recorded in the surface of black hole and ADCF correspondence theory says the gravity information of black hole is recorded in the surface of black hole as a shape of wave. So ADCF correspondence theory is a generalization of Hawking entropy. We have proved that 3 sphere with volume divergence has 4D surface and 5D bulk, and this is applied to black hole. So black hole has 4D boundary and 5D bulk. Now we can prove Riemann hypothesis. Let's prove the C inside black holes and apply Riemann zeta function to ADCFT theory. Also, Riemann zeta function has a 3D domain which is expressed as C near origin point. And the domain belongs to AES, then which within ADCFT correspondence theory should be projected into surface of sphere as a two-dimensional and two-dimension is the range of Riemann zeta function. And as I showed before, the real number of the range is fixed as constant, then only the imaginary number has one free degree. So range is one-dimensional, and when you calculate the real number, it is half. And the domain should be complex number comma one half. When, which is the 3D, uh, when the complex number has real part as a prime number, then the range should be half imaginary number, which is calculated by Riemann zeta function. And in domain, the imaginary number can be adjusted to represent gravity. Then we proved that the real part of Riemann zeta function should be half. Assume Riemann zeta function is a 3D domain, which is expressed as C near origin point, and the domain belongs to A belongs to ADS, then within ADS-CFT correspondence theory, it should be projected into the surface of sphere as a two-dimensional, and the two-dimensional is a range of Riemann zeta function, and belongs to CFT. And as I showed before, the real number of the range is fixed as constant, then only the imaginary number has one, one free degree, so range is one-dimensional. And when we cal calculate the real number, it is half, and the domain should be complex number, comma, half when the complex number has real part as a prime number. Then the range should be half my imaginary number which is calculated by a Riemann zeta function. And in domain, the imaginary number can be adjusted to represent gravity. Then we prove that the real part of Riemann zeta function it should be half. Okay. And black hole has duality and so does electron. In the surface of atom, the distribution of electrons follows that Riemann zeta function. So electron is the key to understand prime number and black core and electron ha has duality which is related to ADCFT correspondence theory. So this calculation follows our pre-study. So I proved Riemann, Riemann hypothesis, mathematics predict everything. So come to our hospital, this would cure your any symptom and disease. This is panacea.